Hi, this is Zach Horton from Mercury Works. Ryan Coogler's film Sinners has been extremely successful in its theatrical run. It's a great movie, and you should definitely see it in a theater if you haven't already, if you get a chance to. It's the kind of film that is just meant to be seen in a theater, and even better, projected on film if possible. That's really how it was designed. What I'm going to demonstrate in this video is how Sinners utilized the IMAX 70mm format to produce such a powerful theatrical experience, especially in theaters that screened it in the IMAX 70mm format on film. Uh, I'll demonstrate how the IMAX 70mm system works uh, by shooting it myself and then making actual theatrical film prints of individual frames. You can see the entire process. At select screenings of movies in the IMAX 70mm format, theaters give out special IMAX film strips. These are made from individual frames from the movie that are printed on the special 70mm print film used to screen the movie at these venues. And these give you a great demonstration of the format. Look how big each frame is. Each of these frames contains the equivalent of an 18K digital image, uh, but there's more to it than that. The equivalent in digital resolution does not explain why this format is so beautiful and amazing to view, right? Because the film print is analog, it renders grain and detail in a completely different way. It's far more alive than digital, with endless detail that, that pulls you into a, a functionally infinite image. Viewing film projected on film is a, a truly magical experience. It feels far more alive and present and thus immersive than a digital image, no matter how high the resolution of the digital image, which of course can't begin to match a 70 millimeter film print. But even if it could, it would not be the same thing. Now, many people get these film prints and just, you know, pack them away as, as a collector's item or sometimes uh, display them as is. But I highly recommend that you actually view these film strips. Mercury Works now makes a viewer for that purpose. That's the best first-hand demonstration of the tonal qualities of 70 millimeter film prints. You have to actually look at them magnified and lit up. Now let's see how this is made. The print film that is projected in a theater is 70 millimeter. The camera negative film is 65 millimeter, very slightly narrower. This is Kodak's advanced motion picture film. It's made in several different varieties, different speeds, and different color balance. Uh, so it can be optimized for each scene. Hoyt van Hoytema, when he shoots uh, Christopher Nolan films, for instance, uses 50D when shooting in bright daylight exteriors, 250D when shooting lit exteriors, and 500T, uh, or on some films 200T, when shooting interiors. Autumn Derald Arkapa, however, uh, the DP on Sinners, prefers to shoot her entire films on just one film stock, 500T. It's the fastest cinema film stock that Kodak makes, uh, which makes it extremely versatile, and it has a really beautiful fine grain structure. So she uses just this single stock for all lighting conditions. So let's shoot some 500T in IMAX style to demonstrate how it works. To shoot IMAX still frames, we need a camera that can take removable film backs and shoot at least 6x7 sized negatives, and a film back that has been modified to accept 65mm motion picture film. The camera we'll use is a Mercury Universal configured for 6x9 shooting. That refers to 6 centimeters by 9 centimeters as a format, which is larger than IMAX, so we'll have the, the coverage we need from the camera. I'll use a vintage lens from the 1960s, the Rodenstock Heligon 80mm f2.8. This is a very high-end lens from the time, meant for 6x9 cameras. I love this little lens. It renders a beautiful vintage image. As a film back, we'll use the Mamiya RB67 70mm back. This was designed to take uh, these special cassettes of 70mm film. You can load as little or as much as you want into these cassettes, unlike you know, amateur formats um, that come preloaded. But this 70mm film that this is made for is not motion picture 70mm film, which is only for theatrical projection. This is 70mm photography film, for professional portrait studios and aerial surveillance cameras. But 70 millimeter backs can be modified uh, to accept 65 millimeter film as well as 70 millimeter, and that's what I've done here. We have special spools and a loader that allows us to load as much 65 millimeter film as we want 
into these cassettes. Uh, this can be shot with Hasselblad backs, uh, as NASA did, but that's a bit smaller than the IMAX frame 6x6. Or on large format cameras and stereo cameras to recreate IMAX 3D using the Mercury stereo camera system. But those are topics for other videos. We're sticking with the classic IMAX 2D frame today as utilized for sinners. So let's shoot something. By default, 500T is balanced for tungsten light. That means that it renders tungsten colored light, which is a warm orangey light, it renders that as neutral white. So for our first shot, we'll stage something indoors. So this simple shot is backlit by daylight hitting window shades late in the day and frontlit uh, with one small light set to tungsten color temperature. After processing an ECN2 chemicals at M Alchemy, here's our resulting negative. Notice that it's 15 perfs wide. It's taller than an IMAX image uh, because here the camera exposed extra information in and above the perforations, uh, but we can ignore that. You'll notice here that the camera negative, just like in the world of photography, has a strong orange mask, uh, but that's compensated for when a print is made in a lab. So there are two things you can do with your camera negative. You can contact print it directly onto a projection-ready positive, or you can scan it digitally so you can manipulate it before going out to the film print. Christopher Nolan tries to direct contact print the negative whenever possible, minimizing CGI and concentrating it in certain shots. I will talk about that in another video. Sinners uh, was entirely scanned to digital as it has extensive special effects throughout, from vampire effects to twinning effects to elaborate color grading. This is called a digital intermediate. When it's finished, uh, laser film recorders are used to write that digital information back onto negative film, uh, then that's called an internegative. This process is called film out. And when you view your center's 70 millimeter film prints, those are created using film out. But in the end, uh, you still end up with a negative, which is then contact printed to 70 millimeter print film. So basically, a huge machine in Hollywood sandwiches the 65 millimeter negative together with the 70 millimeter print film. Notice that despite the different sizes of film, uh, the sprocket holes line up. That's how everything stays aligned or registered. The extra area outside the sprocket holes that are added to the 70 millimeter print film uh, was designed for soundtracks on traditional 70 millimeter releases. On IMAX, though, uh, that area contains frame information as the actual soundtrack is a digital file that is synced with the film print. M Alchemy is the only lab in the world uh, that can perform this process on small clips of film, basically individual frames. All M Alchemy's equipment was custom built for this process. Uh, basically, we dial in exposure and color settings, expose each image to light, making a print on the print film. This film is then developed in special ECP to E chemistry, and the result is a positive image. That's how they make IMAX 70 millimeter release prints for projection. But wait a minute. I said earlier that Autumn Arkapaw, the DP on Sinners, likes to shoot everything with 500T film stock, uh, which is color balanced for tungsten uh, interior lights. If we were to shoot outdoors, it would create a very yellow negative, uh, which would then print to positive film as extremely blue. While this can be uh, manipulated digitally in the digital intermediate stage, the basic way to deal with this is to use a special filter when shooting. This is an 85B filter. It filters the light as it enters the lens before it hits the film. By changing the color of the incoming light to a deeper orange, it mimics tungsten light, and the 500T film renders it as neutral or white. In this way, we can shoot with this amazing film stock even in daylight. Let's give it a try. Here I've shot this towards sunset with an 85B filter in place. So instead of rendering the daylight as blue, it converts it back to a neutral color. Uh, but because late day sunlight is far warmer than noon blue, we still get that warm glow of sunset. Here's our negative. And when we print this using M Alchemy's M Chrome process to 70 millimeter print film, we get a really spectacular image. Of course, we can now load these images into the 70 millimeter film viewer and see all of their glorious detail. These have not gone through the digital intermediate step, which reduces the resolution of the original film significantly. So what we can view here is the full analog resolution and detail and color of the original negative. And I can tell you it looks stunning. And if we're really hardcore and want to go one step further yet, we can even mount this image in an IMAX sized slide mount and project it. 
And that's pretty much how the IMAX 70 millimeter process works. That's how they did it on centers, using this single 500T film stock filtered for different lighting conditions and then ultimately printed to 70 millimeter film for the, the most premium of all projection formats, IMAX 70. And of course, if you are a film professional or an avid fan of the format, you can try it out for yourself. Just check out the links in the description. I hope this helps explain uh, what goes into the IMAX 70 millimeter exhibition format and why it produces a movie going experience unlike any other. For any movie that's been shot on 65 millimeter film and is being released in the IMAX 70 millimeter format, it really is a one of a kind, unique experience to view this projected. All of the work that goes into making a 70 millimeter release print translates into a living, breathing image that is worth the pilgrimage, even if you live very far away. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more explorations of premium film acquisition and exhibition formats. Thanks.